Hey, it's Nick again from Grayscale Gorilla. I am the Gorilla, and in this short tutorial, I wanted to show you guys some of the other features in version 14 of Cinema 4D that uh, we thought were kind of interesting and been playing around with, uh, but probably won't do a full big tutorial on. But I still wanted to make this to show you guys some of the other features I thought were uh, pretty fun and uh, show you guys how to use them. So uh, let's head on into Cinema, and let me show you. So the first thing are uh, color options for lights and nulls. Chris was showing me this. I thought this was really interesting. If you pull up a light, um, you know, you've seen me do this a lot where you just get kind of get like a slightly warm or slightly cool light. Um, but if you have a lot of lights in your scene, you may not know which light is which. So let's make a couple lights here. Let's make our little blue light and our kind of warm light like we do. And uh, But then you, can, you can't really look up unless you name them. And who wants to name layers, let's be honest. Uh, up in your uh, viewport here. You can't really know which light you're grabbing. So one way you can do this is it, you can go into your basic settings on your light and turn on icon color. And you see what that did? It made it like this warmer light. And you can do the same thing with the other light. So now we can know we, we're grabbing our our uh, pale one and our blue one. And you can see a little bit more visually. Well, what's nice is, uh, well, well, what's not nice is if you grab a new light and you and you try to change its color, it's not going to register up in the icon. And that's because this icon color is turned off by default. Well, here's what you can do. You can turn on your icon color on by default and then make sure you set all your settings back to what you want your defaults to be. But then you could actually replace the default. And the way you do that is you make sure your icon color is turned on and you make sure everything is the way you want it and you go to edit set as default and it's going to ask you would you want this current object to be set as default type for this light you say yes now what this means is next time you pull up a light it's going to have those default settings on it so let's pull up the light now let's change the color and you can see it's on by default this is pretty cool well this also works for nulls now nulls uh, I use nulls all the time to uh, either uh, use it in hierarchy and have things under it or or just to organize things but you can also color your null so if you go to the basic tab on your null you do the same thing turn on icon color and in this case it's not a slider for the light it's this display color you could say use color on and now I could say call this the red null and it's gonna show up in the viewport whatever color I pick here so this might be a nice way for you to organize things and just see visually instead of with an icon kind of maybe see colors on how things are set up in your scene and in your hierarchy so anyway that's colors uh, next we have the camera morphing so let me show you that really quickly I think I have a scene here set up with uh, just kind of a low-res version of the of the city kit here what I want to do is fly a, a camera through it and let me show you quickly how to set this up so the camera morphing tools allow you to set up two cameras and then morph between them so let's set up our first camera which is let's say right here and then let's duplicate it move it down and turn it on and then zoom in maybe do a little city fly through here so we're flying through the buildings and we're just gonna fly right through to here. Okay, so that's camera one and camera two. Uh, and also, in 14, you actually, the camera morphs between it just visually in the viewport, so that's kinda nice. It's, all, it's really nice if you have a lot of cameras and you're moving around and all of a sudden you end up on a camera you don't know where it's pointing. That'll kinda show you in an, in an animation kind of jumping between the two so this is kind of a cool feature also but to animate this what you do is you grab both cameras you grab uh, just uh, just grab both of them in in the object view here and go to create camera uh, camera morph and it will automatically set up a new camera that has these two cameras on it so if, you, if we turn on this camera uh, morph camera we can use this blend slider to then animate between each camera and this will work with more than two cameras it'll work with as many cameras as you throw into the system but it's just a nice simple way to set up a, a really quick camera setup um, the last thing I wanted to show you was in the picture viewer now the picture viewer has a new tab it's called filter and this uh, let me make this a little bit larger so we, so we could see it I'm gonna go to full screen mode here so we could see everything I'm gonna make our image a little bit larger but what filter allows you to do is do some basic color correction on your image while it's still in um, in the navigator here in the viewport now this isn't uh, gonna be a replacement for After Effects or Photoshop or anything I'm afraid but I think there's enough tools here to be able to do some basic looks and some basic color correction to make sure your render is where you need it to be and like I always say you always have to do color correction um, 
and at the end of every one of your renders. It's not finished until it's color corrected and, and, and out the door. So what you can do is use these tools to maybe try out some different looks and try out some different color corrections. So what you have are some basic things like saturation and brightness and contrast. Um, but then you have your gamma, which you could change on the fly here. And you also have um, uh, some curves. Now curves to me are one of the most powerful color correction tools, probably the most powerful there is to me. I use them all the time. It allows you to add some contrast and get in there and, and change some stuff. What I'm doing is uh, clicking command to add a new little nub on the, on, the, on the line here so we can make a little bit more detailed curve. So let's say we wanted to add a little bit more curve contrast, but then it also gives us our red, green, and blue curves, which allows us to do things like lift up the shadows and the blue like you see me do all the time. And now here we go. We have a very drastic look between what we started with and what we ended with, and you can actually mix between them. Here's the grading intensity from zero all the way to 100, and you can even save these and try these out. So play around with um, the filter. Uh, like I said, I don't think it's going to replace uh, my 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 actual workflow but for just doing really basic stuff instead of copying and pasting into Photoshop for just a quick little look you may want to play with some of these tools uh, and play around with some color correction but uh, anyway those are a few new features in R14 that I figured I'd show you that we probably won't do a big full tutorial on uh, more of the other short videos we'll do big tutorials on but uh, figure uh, I'd, I'd show you anyway since we're probably gonna play around with them here no matter what. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in another tutorial really soon. Hope you're enjoying 14 and bye.